what is up you guys welcome to today's video if you're new around here my name is Carly I am a labor and postpartum doula and I create content all about pregnancy and labor and motherhood and pretty much everything that falls in between and if you haven't seen the news I recently found out that we are expecting baby number two if you're anything like me patience wise I was testing starting around 8 DPO I tried to wait all the way to 8 DPO um, and I got negative pregnancy tests 8 DPO, 9 DPO, and then on the 10th DPO is when I got my first uh, positive pregnancy test. Now, I have been tracking everything along the way to show you guys um, just an example of what to look for when you're looking to see if your HCG levels are um, rising kind of during those first few weeks of taking tests. I will be adding this video to my fertility series that I have here on my channel. I will link it up above for you if you want to check it out and see the other videos that I have made all about how we manage fertility, how we family plan, all the things that I did to try and increase the odds of us conceiving um, and all that kind of information. So I will link that playlist and series above for you. And before we jump into it, if you are not yet already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and be sure to turn on the notification bell so that you are notified whenever I have a new video go live. I upload every single week and give this video a big thumbs up if you are enjoying it so far. And let's go ahead and jump into it. If you don't know what HCG is exactly. I know like when you look at a pregnancy test and for instance, this is my eight DPO pregnancy test. When you see something like this and you really just do not see a line, um, the reason that there isn't a line yet is because your levels of HCG aren't high enough to be detected on a pregnancy test. If you've looked up like when to take a pregnancy test or read the instructions on the box, usually it says to wait until 10 DPO. That's usually when a test at home will pick up on the level of HCG the earliest. And a lot of times, like with my first pregnancy, I didn't think I was pregnant because the line was pretty faint. And I didn't know that a faint line was also still a positive line. I thought a faint line was like, maybe you are, maybe you aren't. But if your body is producing HCG at all, it means, usually it means that your um, embryo has implanted into your uterus. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some things that can cause a false positive, but it's very rare. And so generally when you do see even the faintest line show up on a pregnancy test, it's an indicator that you are pregnant. Now, I know for me, I find a lot of comfort in seeing what other people have experienced, what their stories look like, what their tests look like, what their ovulation cycles are like. Before I jump into showing you guys kind of how I track things, how I was monitoring my ovulation cycle, um, and how I was like monitoring my HCG levels to see if they were rising over time, I just wanna put out a disclaimer that first of all, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medical professional, I'm a doula, and although I'm really involved in this process with some of my clients, I am not a fertility specialist, I am just showing what has worked for me and my progression lines. And when it comes to fertility, it's such an intimate and personal experience. And every single person's body is so different. All of our hormones are so different. The way that they fluctuate and the way that they interact with one another is just different for everybody. So even if your lines don't look my line, look like my lines, it doesn't mean that yours are worse or better than mine. This is just what I experienced and how I tracked things um, to make sure that I just felt like I was really in control of what was going on and I understood what was my, my body was doing and I just felt like I was really um, in tune with my cycle and understanding what to keep my eyes out for. So like I said, the reason that most boxes say like wait until at least 10 DPO or six days before your missed period um, is because your body won't recognize or the test won't recognize HCG quite yet. Um, and that was true for me. I got a negative eight DPO. I got a negative at nine DPO and then I got a positive at 10 DPO. Some of the things that I was keeping my eye out for and why I continuously took pregnancy tests was to see if I had a chemical pregnancy to see if my HCG levels were increasing, if they were staying the same or if they were decreasing. I am going to put a picture of a chart right here of kind of what to expect as far as your levels are concerned. If you are doing um, blood tests, so blood tests are much more sensitive than these at home pregnancy tests. So if you, are um, going into your doctor to get your blood taken to see if you're pregnant, those should pick up on HCG levels more. And they're also able, able to like monitor the HCG a lot more closely than what I was doing at home. But this chart will show you exactly kind of how much HCG, HCG your body is expected to produce at certain weeks and just kind of what the natural progression tends to look like and the ranges that fall between those weeks. Okay, so this is the notebook that I used to track my ovulation 
ovulation and my pregnancy test. So this is something I'm gonna do a full video about. If that video is live yet, I will link it in the corner for you to go and look. Today, we're not talking about ovulation and tracking and things like that. We're literally just looking at this bottom portion, which is where I kept track of my pregnancy test. So I'm gonna zoom you guys in. And we're really just going to focus on the pregnancy test and the progression of the darkness of the line and how you might be able to um, track your HCG levels at home um, before you actually go in for a confirmation ultrasound or a confirmation blood test or anything like that. This is what I chose to do instead of going in. Um, and I didn't have an ultrasound done until after the first trimester was over. I chose to have mine done between, I think I was like 11 and a half weeks before I had my first ultrasound. So this was the way that I was tracking at home. For my daily tracking purposes, I opted to do the strip test because it's a much more affordable way. I personally just bought a kit that was um, a pregnancy test and these ovulation strips as well. And it's really affordable. I will link the ones that I use down below on Amazon. Um, I just did a video about pregnancy test sensitivity. And I learned though that these are not the most sensitive ones based on the comparison that I did. Um, if I had to do it over again, I would definitely opt for the easy at home strips instead of the pregmate ones. Um, I haven't tested the easy at home ovulation strips, or I don't even know if they have them if they do. Um, but I can say the ovulation strips were great, but the pregnancy test, the easy at home one, it showed a darker line faster. Um, so that's one thing to note, but on the left over here, this is just the date, the actual date of the month. And then the number corresponding right next to it, that is the day of my cycle. So I personally have a cycle that lasts 25 days before I will start my period again and my cycle starts over. So um, on the 25th day, it was the 10th of February and the 25th day for me meant that that would have been 12 days um, past ovulation. I'm going to use this piece of paper just to kind of keep us in line here so that it doesn't get confusing. So this top line up here, this first test that I took, I was on the 21st day of my cycle. So for me, that would have been one, two, three, four, five days before my missed period, which is why for me, I thought that it was okay to start testing that early um, because everything recommends like within six days of your missed period. But for me, that's also only eight days past ovulation. So that first test, this one right here, is a negative. Nothing showed up on it and there isn't anything there. In my pregnancy announcement video, um, I show footage of me actually taking those tests. So if you wanna look at that video, I will link it too. So then the next day would have been nine days past ovulation and four days before my missed period, which is this test. And that test also showed a negative. I did not get a positive test on that day. Now the next day on um, February 8th, uh, that would have been 10 DPO for me and three days before my missed period, I did get a positive pregnancy test. I don't know if you'll be able to see it from this angle, but you can see there is a really, really um, faint line. So then from that day on, I continued to have pretty faint lines. It honestly didn't get much darker on the strip test. So I was a little concerned just because, um, you know, you want to see it getting darker. You want to see your HCG increasing. So even though these aren't as sensitive as a blood test would be, I was still really interested in just tracking things and seeing what it looked like um, and just trying to get to know my body better. If you didn't know, this was the first month that we tried to conceive. Um, I track my ovulation every single month. That's my form of family planning and I use a basal um, thermometer to track my basal temperature every single day and I've done that for years. So I'm really aware of my cycle and very in tune with when I ovulate and, um, you know, try to optimize my fertility as much as possible. Same with Drew. And we were able to conceive the first month, which we are incredibly grateful for. And it's something that I know isn't the case for everybody. And we definitely don't see past that. And I don't take it lightly whatsoever. I know that conception journeys look so different for everybody. And even if you did the exact same thing that I'm showing you, I did, it doesn't necessarily mean that our stories are going to look exactly the same. And I just want to say specifically that I am holding so much space for those of you who are on your trying to conceive journey. And 
and aren't having the exact turnouts that maybe you were hoping for. And I hope this video doesn't feel like I am downplaying any type of fertility struggles that anybody goes through. I am just trying to share my specific journey because I know for me in managing my anxieties of trying to conceive and deciding to have a baby and um, just kind of going through the whole process, I found so much comfort and calmness in seeing other people's experiences and what their stories look like. And um, I hope that if you're watching this, you find some of the same things in this video. So like I said, this was my main way of tracking um, because this is a really affordable method. And once I knew I was pregnant and I wanted to see how my HCG levels were doing, I just stuck with these and I did not do all of the tests that I'm about to show you because it's much more cost effective to monitor this way. Um, so the, these are what the pregnancy tests look like from eight DPO all the way to 19 DPO. Now, alongside this method, I also opted to use some um, classic pregnancy tests too. Let me zoom you guys back out so that you can see all of these. Now, like I said, I didn't go all the way to the 19th day past ovulation because it's just really expensive. These are not cheap tests in comparison to the strip test, um, but I also did wanna take some of these because they are much more sensitive. If you watched my video, you would know that the first response ones were by far the most sensitive ones. So when I got negatives on eight DPO and nine DPO, I wanted to take those tests and see if they confirmed it. And they did in fact confirm it. So I'll show you guys um, up close what these looked like. So this was eight DPO and there really wasn't anything at all on eight DPO. Um, I had a box of clear blues that I ended up opening for the ninth day. And that one also did not show any kind of line. So um, I got negatives on eight DPO and nine DPO with the stick test as well as the strip test. And then on 10 DPO, this is when um, I got my first actual positive from this type of test too. And I don't know if you'll be able to see this one or not because it did get that weird yellowing effect that happens sometimes. Um, but the line is, yeah, you can see it. It's right there, the line to the left. Um, and on the 10th day, that's when I decided to take the clear blue digital test too. I have it written on um, the back. As you can see, I did get that pregnant um, response on the digital one, which I always really enjoy these tests because it just makes it easier. You really can't see that line as well on the 10th day. And I don't know if I had taken this one on these two days, if it would have shown pregnant or if the HCG really wasn't recognizable at all. Um, these tests are more expensive and generally they don't pick up on HCG at such a low level. I wasn't expecting to get a pregnant line when, or a pregnant response on the digital one when I had this test because um, it was 10 DPO. It was still really light, you know, that whole thing. So then this is 11, 12 and 13. And I'll zoom you guys in so you can see a little better. And I'll actually, I'll just take this guy out since it's not in the same family. This is the progression from eight to nine to the first positive, which is here to a darker positive on days 11, 12 and 13. Um, 13, you can see pretty clearly but the days did get darker. And I know I wish I had all of the same <laughs> test, but I did not take a first response on the ninth day because I got two negatives in a row. So I really just didn't want to waste any tests if I wasn't pregnant um, and was trying to save them for when I really wanted to see if something was positive and I knew it wasn't. So um, yeah, that is the progression from eight DPO to 13 DPO on a first response. But that is gonna be it for today's video, you guys. Thank you so much for coming and watching. Like I said, if you are not yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you as a part of this empowering community and give this video a big thumbs up if you have enjoyed it. And I will see you guys in next week's video. Bye.